Thanks for joining us and checking out the Camper Build Progress. In this video, we're reviewing everything storage. We realized some folks would never want to wander from their standard cabinets. However, after spending months in our old truck camper where storage is a challenge, we knew we wanted to do something different. Here's an overview of our unique and utilitarian way to create abundant storage in a truck camper. It's time to take a few minutes to show you what I've done. Um, some of the time lapse I took was mostly of my backside working in the small space here. This space is about 30 inches wide and about seven feet tall. It was designed to be the wardrobe for the camper. Uh, wardrobe, I use a pretty loose term, meaning that it's gonna store clothing, but it's also gonna be our pantry as well and, and any other short-term, long-term storage. It is a bin rack and a small hanging space. That's uh, functionally what it is. Um, although I'm a pretty capable cabinet maker, I decided that I didn't want to uh, make a wardrobe in a traditional sense because of the weight involved in all of the boxes and drawers. I found that the a light single piece plastic bin was probably the most optimal weight space consideration and so I did some research and we, we actually Cheryl and I looked fairly intensively to find the right size bins and you'll see this uh, same idea uh, proliferate in the kitchen as well is we're going to find an appropriate plastic size bin that meets our needs it's probably more durable and certainly lighter weight than what we could make out of either aluminum or of um, wood so this is what, what I have done, is this, this space on either side is made of a one inch wall. And this one inch wall is made of two eighth inch Luan mahogany skins over a uh, torsion box uh, of three quarter inch uh, polyisocyanurate foam. So it is a very substantial and rigid wall that doesn't move at all. And it is actually fiberglassed and, and screwed into place. So it is an integral part of the body of the camper on both sides. Um, so the structure of this, as I'll get to, I'll take it apart uh, as we go here and you'll be able to see how I put it together. These bins don't have any drawer fronts on them and, and they could have. I set them, they're recessed three quarters of an inch inside of this enclosure so I could put a door front on there if I wanted to make them more cosmetic and look them more like a piece of cabinetry. However, I believe that cabinetry is really a affectation of domestic house construction and probably less efficient in the motorhome RV uh, space. So functionally, and, and uh, one of the things that we uh, everybody always wants is where do you put your shoes when you come in? So the space right under here is only about six inches deep and that's where the wheel well begins, but that's gonna be our shoe storage. And on the bottom here, we have an arrangement of, this is a, a 14 and a half inch bin. And then we have one, two, three uh, 11 inch bins and then some nine and a half a nine and a half inch bin all the way at the top and all the rest of them there's five seven and a half inch bins and each of them intended to be either food storage or clothing storage or you know paper products whatever um, since the bins are very slippery uh, with plastic on aluminum the there's definitely a need to make sure that the bins stay installed but I don't like the the concept of the push to lock, uh, push to unlock buttons that are traditional in many RV campers. I'd like to be able to get somewhere, unlock everything. So in that uh, phase, we have two bars here that lock all of the, all of the bins in place, and they're in a keyhole mount. Just it up, and you can remove the mount. away and now any of the drawers can be opened and the other benefit of not having drawer slides is the drawer can be completely removed from the rack 
we can take them outside we can, we can stack them up these are these are stacked on top of each other so if we wanted to make a little table outside we could do it easily just by taking our boxes out I don't know if we're going to do that but they uh, it's very convenient especially the, the topmost one I can't even see I'm 6'4 and I can't even see into the top of the topmost one so the only way that it's ever going to work is to to take it down and set it on the counter uh, in order to get into it and Cheryl being only a five foot six is has even greater demands for being able to take the bins down in order to get out get things out of them um, these bins are completely enclosed there's no uh, mesh sides to them I think that's a benefit to keep things from either getting in or getting out of them but there is a small gap at the top to make sure that any moisture that's in the camper won't build up and that is actually one of the issues that I have with cabinets in a camper is that cabinets do create an insulated zone and if you can tolerate the insulated zone it's helpful but what you can't tolerate is things staying in the cam in the camper but in a cabinet that freeze and so this is designed to have completely air circulation and make sure that all of the all of the clothing and articles inside of it stay at cabin temperature and not something well below that which could cause condensation and, and induce moisture in them so on the other side of it here uh, this side is a typical hanging closet because everybody needs a place to hang your coats so I've got a single hanging bar and this closet space may get a door at some some point in time but uh, not anytime soon with the priorities that I have um, so in order to show you how I built this the inside of this cabinet here is, is one quarter inch uh, Baltic birch plywood all of the materials that I used to construct this were eighth inch thick aluminum by the way, these bins came from, from Global Industrial, and they can be bought individually. They're anywhere from $22 to $30 a piece. They can also be bought on Amazon individually, but at a higher price. Uh, making a large order from Global Industrial was the most appropriate, although they did charge us $35 for home delivery uh, on top of their free shipping, but it seemed like a good deal because of the total reduction in the price and we try to order everything at once knowing that if we want one or two we can still order those through Amazon to get the same bins so inside of here what we have the rails are each a three-quarter inch uh, channel aluminum and there's one on either side the center span here is an eighth inch by three eighths inch wide flat bar um, I don't one of the other things I don't like about conventional cabinetry is the loss of space inherent in a half inch of drawer slide, a half inch in wall, and a half inch of cabinet thick, thickness. In this particular case, I only have an eighth inch between my two cabinets, so I've used as much of the space as efficiently as possible. Uh, there's a 40 thousandths aluminum strip in the front and in the back to reinforce the eighth inch Luan uh, mahogany plywood. Um, probably probably worthwhile to note here that there are several different kinds of blind rivets used to assemble this uh, what we have here this is called an explosive rivet this rivet doesn't actually bulge at the end it splits the rivet into four pieces and it spirals spirals and this rivet is particularly useful for it is designed to be used for soft materials and so you can see how much larger the end of it becomes how it can grip a much, much larger piece of material especially where the um, eighth inch Luan plywood is concerned this particular rivet is what is an exterior rated rivet it's got a stainless mandrel and aluminum body but if you look very closely the you can see that the the rivet is clinched onto the onto the mandrel and this will create a watertight seal so these are waterproof rivets. The other one that I use when I have a, a long application where I'm trying to uh, rivet plywood to aluminum, this is a telescoping rivet and you can see it's got three different bands here and this, this rivet will actually grip a very large range of material, uh, but they are very expensive, so I don't use very many of those. Um, if you're new to rivets, they're a wonderful thing. There's so many more rivets that you can get than what you might find at the home centers. The home center stuff typically have an aluminum mandrel and an aluminum barrel. 
and uh, this is a steel mandrel and aluminum barrel which you wouldn't want to use in an outside application because the remains of the steel mandrel will rust and give you rust streams like I said this is an exterior rated it's got a stainless steel mandrel and uh, this aluminum rivet here the explosive rivet it's got a steel mandrel as well so it's it's not an exterior application rivet uh, but uh, a lot of uh, information on rivets is available if you go look for it mostly industrial applications anyway not too much to see here um, all the bins of course come completely out and you can see in the back of the cabinet here where you can see that it's actually screwed to a piece of wood that's right against the wall that wall again is fiberglassed to the outside wall over here on the side we have a 60,000 strip of aluminum that's first riveted to the wall and then the uh, brake guide rails are riveted through the aluminum and through the wall to make it a, a homogeneous assembly um, in the back you can see right down the center is a, is a two inch uh, T extrusion eighth of an inch thick and very very substantial uh, and then again in the center here is a three inch by eighth inch flat bar um, which is stiffened by keeping the uh, the center web of the cabinet here uh, and rinse and repeat pretty much the same thing all the way up and down um, my handy dandy used to be a pool sweeper a piece of aluminum tube into some fabricated mounts that I assembled and uh, that's it you just watched Steve walk through the wardrobe design and some of the thoughts that we put into the storage solution. And I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the additional storage that we do have available in the camper. And I'll be honest, we are both very overwhelmed and excited about the amount of storage that has become available by going into a flatbed camper design. Opposite the wardrobe area is the kitchen cupboard space. And as you can see, we replicated the bins as part of our storage solution here. And part of the reason why forgot about the lock. is on the other side of this is that wheel well that's pretty deep and that's where the air conditioning compressor will eventually go on the outside. And these bins actually fit the wheel, so they are just a perfect fit to go under there and give us at least some storage underneath the kitchen cook area. In addition to that, above the wheel well is a really deep space. So what Steve did is built some deep drawers. We split it up. So we have two deep ones and two shallower ones. It's the cooktop. And you can see how far back these go. Under the sink area storage we have two additional bins that will go way back here so for things that are used a little less often and then this will hold the instapot and we'll probably have a couple little caddies up here um, put in for some additional items <coughs> Since I'm not using conventional cabinets, conventional latches for those cabinets uh, don't work here. So what I've done is to make a removable latch. And what I really would like to be able to do is to come into a camping spot and open up my latches so I don't have to latch and relatch drawers constantly. So the one I just finished here was the, the one for the kitchen cabinets. These are the six bins here. All uh, need something just to keep them from coming out and so what I've done is I've just got a piece of two inch by eighth inch flat bar that uh, just serves to block all of them made a couple loops of the same flat bar and it just hangs there it, it doesn't lock in place and it's possible I guess that it could bounce up and bounce out of engagement and if it does at some point in time maybe I'll do something about it now we're taking a look into the bunk area, which has been fairly finished off now. We've got the 
headboard and the screen for the hatch in. But as far as storage goes, what we are doing in here is again leveraging the bins. Uh, we liked them so much. But we will have three to four along the side of the mattress. The mattress will go up almost next to those bins with enough room for the bedding. And then Steve is going to put a cover over here. We won't have those when we do our shakedown launch coming up in about three weeks. Um, but eventually that will have a cover so it will actually be a nice little side table storage as well. Looking down from the bunk to the back of the camper, we talked about the wardrobe storage, the kitchen counter storage, but a couple other smaller nooks and crannies that we will have available. One will be actually in the bathroom area. This is the beginning that we will launch with, but we're going to have shelves with some racks or bags or bins, um, but this will be the first section. But we'll do more detailed shots of the bathroom and the kitchen in a follow-up video. Above the oven, there is also storage space between the oven and the ceiling, which was pretty cool. The oven being up higher might have been nice, but I wouldn't have been able to use it too well. And then the back dinette area, we have the sofa. I am building that currently. It's in progress. But just to show you real quick, we also have a storage space on both sides. So one big one here before the angle comes in. And then this one will have actually a full bin. It's not here yet, um, but that'll be there. And then this will be a second storage area in the angled section. And in the angle section, the access to get to it is actually going to be having to lift it up. So we do not plan on making this something we would access often. It would just be periodic access. Steve's cargo boxes turned out great, and we have one as a wet bay and another as a power bay going on the front. The wet bay was shown in our video episode 5, if you want to check out the details. The two rear boxes will be additional storage, and we'll most likely use one like we use our current Lance Camper's generator box, and the other can be for tools and recovery gear. In the upcoming video, you will see the kitchen and bath details, and between those spaces and the storage bins, I think we were able to strike a balance with the utilitarian and the warmth. Going to a flatbed design has gained us so much more interior storage, and we're excited to pack her up. Thank you for checking out our camper build progress. We enjoy sharing our project and providing inspiration for yours. If you are a fellow do-it-yourselfer, like this video and follow our progress by subscribing. We hope to see you out on the road and good luck with your working and exploring.